Now let us let us discuss the maximum. Okay. So and, and and I can I can I can do this thing. That means first of all, a match filter is a linear filter. Let me come to it. Uh, let me go to it. So first of all, so match filter is a linear filter. And it, it is designed to provide maximum signal to noise ratio. Please remember, signal to noise means signal power by noise power, signal to noise power ratio at its output for a given transmitted symbol. That means, let me let me show you the picture. Say this is my receiving filter. I didn't have the signal down conversion block. I have a symbol or signal, whatever it is, and there's a white noise. And then say here also we don't have also equalizer also. No equalizer. And let, let us make life simple. Okay. And here you are getting the output, which is XT modulation of XT convolution HT. And you have a sample block. That means Y of capital T. If you, if you could remember the basic block, that means the if you, if you if you go to that, if you, I, I think you can you can relate uh, these two actually. That means just wait, let me see that if I can show you side by side. Is it, is, it, is it visible? You see that, that means I have a SIT, here it is there, put the GT. Then I have a AWGN, um, NT, WT, whatever it is. I don't have frequency down conversion of this receiving filter, so I am just writing HF, HT, whatever it is. There is no equalizing filter, I have a sampler, and then I have some Y, K, y capital T, Z capital T. This is called a, this is called a linear receiver. Okay, so that I, I told that it is a linear filter. Now, now this actually this HF or HT you have to choose. Now, what is that? What is the optimization criteria? Optimization criteria is that HT you have to choose in such a way that this at the output, that means here, your in here or maybe not not such. So, so not here, when equalizing filter is not there, rather, rather here, at T equal to capital T, that your SNR, that means SNR at its output, we should be maximum for a given transmitted signal wave. That means given GT, SNR here, that means see, GT and WT both are going inside that. That means inside this YT, you have some contribution of GT contribution of WT. That means YT is what? That GT convolution HT, WT convolution HT. So you have signal to noise component and you are sampling T equal to capital T. So you are also you have some sampled signal, sampled signal component, sampled noise component. That sampled signal power square by sampled noise power square, that ratio should be maximum. For given, for this given G. Okay. Now, so now let us let us go to our then discussion. Maximum SNR power at its output. Please remember that, 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 that what is optimal for a given transmitted symbol wave. Okay. Now that your signal ST plus that NT. That if you, if you if I can show you the other book then actually that ST plus some WT that is 
that is there and that it is output at t equal to capital G you have a sampler and it has a signal component and it has a noise component and that what is my signal to noise ratio that signal to noise ratio is that the output will be some that output signals component sum ai square and divided by sigma 0 square now please please remember what is my ai can you this is ai at t equal to capital t ai so what is this ai business ai is basically nothing but that you have already transmitted that s key through the field i that means what is my ai t that means it is something like that it is ait ait is is a fourier transform of aif what is aif that is hf into sf sf is your input okay say or rather you can write sif it doesn't matter and you are taking the inverse fourier transform that's why it is ait so that means in the in this one in this picture actually that that ai what is ai ai ef is gf into gf into hf and then taking the means in that fourier transform now that so this is my ai okay that means at the output side signal component now that If, if you if you if you if you see that means for the noise it is a additive wide band noise and i am assuming that two sided psd of the noise this is flat which is zero by two because if you, if you remember we studied these things when we were talking about that normalized signal to noise ratio that means power spectral density of the noise that is something like that if and it is sorry p of and this p of f is a watt per hertz okay f is minus plus infinity to minus infinity this is a psd okay so now what about the output noise power now if you can remember that if i have a filter if i have a filter okay say this is your xt and this is your y and filter is say some hd okay now e of if it exists and now y will also be random a is some deterministic filter our spectral density of the stochastic process y py a equal to mod of hf square pxf if you are not accustomed please see the signal systems book you will get this for xt and yp random signal. so that means now what is my output noise power output noise power is basically this output noise power is what for zero mean signal it is for zero mean noise it is sigma square sigma sigma zero square is the sigma output square is the variance that is that means what is my output power how if i just integrate this this one with ds that means you have to integrate this now you see that input power spectral is dm now input power spectral density is n0 by 2 i told input noise spectral density is n0 by 2 so i will take about n0 by 2 minus infinity to plus infinity mod h square dm is it please remember this is all capital it means it's in hertz means unnecessary they have written small a but that should not be any digital component it all all continuous time okay so ap is in hard now that what is my then signal that means my signal to noise ratio at t equal to t please remember that means i have to do that uh, maximization of the snr at the same thing point okay so so what is that so that means what is my signal power signal power is that mod of this square okay so and at t equal to capital t so that means i have to take ai capital t 
then mod then square ai capital t means here i will put a t so minus infinity plus infinity mod of square but e to the power j to pi f capital t this output signal to noise ratio so please remember this is output signal to noise ratio at sampling point okay that we are trying to maximize okay then only your output then only your because you are getting this the signal plus white noise this is some sort of a channel kind of thing your channel is just a, uh, corrupted with noise okay and you are trying to you are, this is your receiving filter okay that you are designing at the receiver please remember this is from this side is receiver okay on that side is a this is this is maybe channel and this is a transmitter something like this so i want at this point i want some sort of a maximum snr kind of thing at sampling point that i am trying to do okay now that so this is my signal power and this is my noise power now what we have to do we have to maximize it that we will choose and maximize it see sf is given because st is given Capital T is known because S T is given means for symbol interval. A zero T is also given. As no, this are this you cannot change. Okay. Only thing is that you have to you, your control is a is equal to filter parameter H A for H T. Okay. Now that for S N R this one will be maximum for H A equal to H zero H. Now that will save your maximum S. Now you see that we have studied the Schwarz inequality. What is my Schwarz inequality? Schwarz inequality basically says that cos square theta less than one. Basically, do you know that cos square theta less than one? Do you know cos square theta less than one? Yes, sir. So that means this is something. If I, if you if you if you take that uh, two two vector a and b, this is some sort of a a dot b and mod of that square divided by this one is some sort of a uh, that vector slang square. Look at some. Means mod of means summation of mod a i square, okay, and this is summation of mod b i square. If you just do so, this is some sort of a Schwarz inequality. If you if you if you could you could you remember this thing? Have you already studied Schwarz inequality anywhere? so now so this is something like that cos square theta less than equal to 1 that means cos square theta means a dot b divided by mod a mod b now if you take the square of that one that is a dot b is to take square this is square this is square. this is less than basically basically if you take this is a vector form okay mod a square means what means basically like this, if you take the function form actually it will like 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 it will come like this and when this when the max, when you will attain the maximum value when a and b are collinear that is a equal to k b Something like that. When it is a real, and otherwise we will have k a equal to k b star. If it is a complex value vector, if you just if you just do the some calculations, so a equal to k b star. Otherwise, if you take real value, a equal to k. If it is when two vectors are on the same direction, then your cos square theta is having a maximum value. That is theta equal to zero and cos square theta equal to one. So that means. Now, if I choose this, if one x is as h a, and if two x is at, okay, 
then i can i can write that that mod of this h f square and mod of f f two x square means mod of s f e to the power minus j two pi f t square but mod of now mod of a b equal to mod of a into mod of b that is mod of s f square and mod of e to the power j two pi z but mod of e to the power j two pi is one so that is gone so you are finally getting like this. Now that means your signal. So I have this expression. Now what is my signal to noise ratio? Now signal to noise ratio is this term divided by n zero by two this term. So that means this term divided by n zero by two h f that is a two by n zero mod s s square because your signal to noise. What is my signal to noise? Signal to noise at capital T. This Stop term divided by mod h f square. That means this term divided by mod of h f square and mod of h f integration integration d f and a zero i two. Okay, that is a zero i two. Okay. So that is basically at this two. Uh, that is this is my this term is basically signal to noise, but this term is less than equal to this of two by n zero because I have a two by n zero time time integration mod s f. Now what is my mod s f square? If I if you so that means that what is my maximum value of signal to noise ratio? Maximum value of signal to noise ratio is when the equality holds. Equality holds means say, this term. I am assuming this is my from the Parseval relation. This is the signal energy. If, if you if you remember that s of s square means mod of square t dt zero to say t c maybe that is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity, or you can you can take this one is also minus infinity to plus infinity mod of That is energy conserved over transfer. So I can write this as E. I can write this as energy of the symbol or signal, and so this is the case. And maximum signal to ratio is the two E by n zero. Now please remember that maximum S N R is dependent on the signal input signal energy, not on the particular shape of the symbol waveform. Okay. And also the power spectral density of the noise. Okay, that means signal energy divided by noise spectral density. Okay. Now, now what will be the optimum field transfer function? Now, optimum field transfer function. What is the condition of equality? Equal because on equality is given in the op optimum. That means f one x equal to k f two x. That means h f equal to your k into A star f e to the power minus j two pi f. So that means h f equal to a zero f optimum one k s a star f e to the power minus j two pi f. Now if I take what is my from there if I take the say a zero t if I take the Fourier transform of this one then I will get what is your a zero t is k s the So it is S star, so S T capital is just a just a term over here, so D a term, so T minus small T or T zero to the capital T because T zero to the capital T I have to see. Okay. So that means the impulse response of the filter is of the optimum filter that produces maximum output signal to noise ratio. Impulse response is the mirror image of the Basic signal is and delayed by the mirror image means s minus t. That then is a delayed by symbol duration, so symbol time duration. And this equation three point five six. This one that the uh, this is first of all this is that causal. Okay, because otherwise what happened that if if I just if I have a s t as it is causal. Now s minus t will be non causal, but as I have a shift of capital T unit, so that makes it 
because s minus t is unionized. Now, if, if, I, if, I, if I show you the picture, that means this is a, this is my symbol vector. This is my symbol vector. S minus t is opposite, this is unpuzzle, non puzzle. Now, ht is that if I take the s t minus capital T, then I have a I have a shift on this direction, so this is also possible because it starts from. So, so that means filter has this type of impulse So that means if your the point is if your input signal waveform is like this, say this is for now. What is SIT? Basically, say you are sending say for binary transmission, you are sending zero and one. So that means say S zero T you are sending something like this. S one T you are sending something. Or something other. Okay. So now, first of all, this H T will be the S capital T minus T. There it is called. That means the impulse response is matched to the signal waveform. Okay. It is some related to signal waveform. Now, now you see. So this is this is the basic idea. Now let us let us do that means what will we do in the match. Now, next, so that means first of all, so that means I have my, I have my RT, RT is ST plus N0 T, I have my HT or H0 T, whatever you say, then I have a next filter at T, and I have J of, this is J of small t. Okay, this is the basic idea. Now what RT is basically ST and some in the or WT. So that means JT is the R convolution H. That means R convolution H. And I am assuming it is causal. So that means up to JT is 0 to T, R tau HT minus tau theta. Now, now for H T minus tau and I am assuming for the time being that K is and what is my H T minus tau? H is related to H T was K S capital T minus tau small t. So it is K S of K of K into S of capital T minus T plus small tau. That is capital T minus T plus small tau. I am assuming K is 1. It, just, it doesn't matter. It's just I am putting a K equal to 1. Now, that means you have the expression is this. Now, but I want J to capital T because I am only interested at sampling time, sampling, sampling instead. So I am putting at T equal to capital T. So I am getting 0 to T at tau S at T equal to that means S tau. That is here it will be capital T. These two are gone. So R tau S tau beta. Okay. Now this this one you see this operation is basically what you are doing correlating R tau with S tau. Okay. This is the correlation structure. Now Say now I have my receiver RT. Now this RT is basically ST plus WT. Now when I have some sort of a MRE kind of communication, that means say when it's a four arrow, zero 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 one one zero one. So that means zero zero you are sending one symbol, zero one another symbol, one zero another symbol, one one another symbol. So I have SD or rather S1T, S2T, T, S3T, T, S4, T, four different symbol. Okay. Now, using a bank of, you are making M correlators. Okay. So, now that received signal is correlated with each prototype. Uh, the received, I have a received signal. RT is correlated with the each prototype SIT using a bank of M correlators. And the signal SIT, whose product integration of correlation is the maximum. That is basically that that matches RT better than SJT. Okay, for J not equal to one. So that means that 
I have that I have an RT. I have a uh, some correlator S1T, S2T, S3T. S3 T, S3 T, S3 T. Okay. I will correlate with this. This is my RT. This is S1, S2, S3, S4. Please, what will I do? I will just do the, or rather, I will do something like this. Probably. This one, then this one T, I will do whether this is in We will send this, then another one, S2, I will send to that integration. And then each one I will get Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4. Now, then I will check that is the maximum output Z. That means I will check which one is big at T equal to capital T. Because I will, I will only check Z capital T, Z1 capital T, Z2 capital T, Z3 capital T, Z4 capital T. That means this Z1 is the correlation RT with S1, Z2 is the correlation RT with S2, Z3 is the correlation RT, RT with S3, and Z4 is the correlation RT with S4. Uh, which is the maximum correlation means that R is maximally similar to that particular sigma. So I will choose that means depending on that maximum value of Z, Z3 is maximum, I will say that means R3 is maximally similar to S3. So that means basically S3 has been said. Okay, so I am taking the decision. Okay. So this is this is the idea of the match signal. Okay. So you and there are some uh, this, please please read this portion. That means on comparison of the comparison of the convolution and correlation and all these things. So basically match filter means you are saying it is convolution, but convolution with a filter which is itself big. And your convolution, you do the uh, one flipping, then only you do the, all this operation. But as the filter is already flipped, if you do the another another flip, that means you are getting the original original signal. And then you are doing of sum of lag some kind of thing, running sum, okay, lag running sum. That means this is a correlation. So that that why that they explain that when the actually match filter is implemented as a correlator you know, block. Actually, you did not do all this. So, and they have taken a sinusoid and they have done a mass filter output, which means for all T, and they have taken a correlator output, and you see that at T equal to capital T, that means mass filter implementation, correlator output implementation, they, they are there. Okay. Because I am, I am only interested at T equal to capital T, not any other point. Okay. Oh, anyway, they are matching. So, read that portion, it will be, it will be useful. Next, I will. So that is that is that is, is a basically a, a this is some sort of a max filter. You see that means this is my RT that is is IT plus NT, and I have a max filter. Is the what was my uh, max filter H capital T minus small T, and I am doing J T. This is a max filter representation, and this is some sort of a correlator representation. Okay. So anyway, just 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 read the portion. The same thing. It is they have they have explained. Only thing is that they have they have done only one S1 minus S2. They they in that way they are doing. But correlator structure you can do something the way I was explaining that in that case you need you need to to multiply. I was just telling you will take R T and you will multiply with S1 T and then do the integration and get Z1T, Z1T. And I was saying you do here you multiply another multiplier, S2, and get do the integration, this T, T, and get Z. Okay, but the, you, the, this one here you need a two multiplier to integrator, rather you can even, if you just do it S1 minus S2, you'll find the same expression you will get it in this way. So this is actually better, better realization. Please read this portion. I am not explaining this thing. Please do little, do the little mathematical calculation. You will get this way right? because this is much more compact realization. Anyway, and 
another point that means there is a dilemma in representing this is also very important dilemma in representing RDS and the latest event. When we draw the signal, we say that F t equal to t zero, t one, t two. That means this is this portion is later in time. This portion is earlier in time. But in a network, the same thing we have to do something like that. Means we have to we have to do it. That actually the signal earlier is this one is this we have to, we have to flip and then we have to do that. It is 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 some tau one. Is similarly the output you will you will get here. That means first you have got this one. Then you have your first you have given this. Okay, then you have given this. Then you have given this one. Okay, so 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 this is this is this is the network representation. This is the network representation. But signal representation is this one. Okay, so you have to be very careful. That means sometimes I give in the exam, sometimes give I give this type of representation, sometimes I give this type of representation. You should be very careful that what is the means. If you should choose it proper, if you if you just flip the signal input signal output signal in a right manner, otherwise you will be confused. Okay. Anyway, now let us talk about the optimizing the error performance that is probability of B error in the context of additive white Gaussian noise channel. Okay. Now let us uh, talk about that. So again, let us go to um, here yeah, now. So that means till now we were talking about, we were discussing about about this match filter. That means this receiving filter. Now we are talking about we are not talking about equalizing filter. Please remember, till now we are not talking about equalizing. Filter. We are talking about receiving filter, receiving filter, optimum mismatch match filter, and all these things. And there are certain disadvantages of match filter. There is, there is, you have to, you have to know the perfect time of arrival of the input signal. Otherwise, receiving filter output is not that good. Please, please read what I am telling you. That means receiving filter has, there are certain disadvantages of receiving filter. That means you have to know that exact time of arrival of the signal. Okay, otherwise you cannot, you cannot. You cannot calculate. You cannot get the proper output. So please read a little bit of books. Actually, see my note is not accurate. I am not giving the note. Most probably you have already got some idea from that yesterday's class test. Yesterday's uh, some semester exam. Anyway, so let us talk about that is probability of beta error. Already we have studied that. Now. Error probability, if you remember, that means this probability of B error is basically Q of A1 minus A2 by 2 sigma, 2 sigma, sigma 0. That means what is my A1 and A2? If you can remember, that means the mean of the random variable. That means, let us see what is my A1 and A2. That means A1 is the likelihood of P, P J given S1 and A2 is the mean of likelihood probability PDF of the P J given S2. Now, so if you if you remember that is we calculated the probability of B error. And finally, for binary one, we explained in this way, and we calculated. And finally, what we have we have tried to find out this is my optimum threshold. We explained this thing, and the probability of B error is finally we have we have seen that it is a complementary error function of a one minus a two by two c plus one. Okay, so. Now this is my a one minus if there is some q that means it's a say uh, standard normal variate. What is q function? Q function is the right hand point. Okay. Now for this when you want to minimize the error, 
That means this a one minus a two by two sigma square. That you have to move to that side. Then only your error will be reduced. Okay. So so that means that what you have to do a one minus a two by two sigma square. If you want, if you maximize that one. Then you will have the probability of beta error will be higher. Either a one and a two should be means a one is much bigger than a two, or sigma square should be very small. So that that ratio difference of a one minus a two, the ratio of the difference of a one minus a two and sigma sigma zero that should be higher. Or a one minus a two by sigma zero to sigma zero that whole square that one. Also should be big. This is this is the basic idea. You are you have to push this red line to this side. Then only your area will be reduced. Right hand side area will be reduced. Okay. So your probability of beta. Now let us see that 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 means that this PB is was if you, if you Remember that for binary case, for bi, for binary case, the optimum decision threshold has been chosen by that gamma equal to a1 plus a2 by 2, and what is my probability of and the threshold? If we could choose that threshold, that means that we uh, describe that. That that gamma zero is a one plus a two by two. If I choose that threshold, the probability of beta will be complementary error function q of a one minus a two by two sigma. Now I want to minimize. Please remember that I want to minimize this p d. So that I have to. It is necessary to choose the filter that maximizes the. Qx. Okay. Maximize the argument. Argument. Now, argument of Qx is x. So, what I have to do now? We need to determine the linear filter that maximizes a one minus a two by two sigma zero. Or equivalently, I have to maximize this. At least, how, how can I maximize this? I have to choose a linear filter. Now, this this basically we discussed. That means the uh, what is my this one? This a one minus a two whole square by sigma zero square. This is basically the square of different signal in the instantaneous power. Okay. Now that is the and a max filter is described in this way. On this is some sort of a SNR type of thing. Now this. This that signal to noise at t equal to capital T. That means that if I choose s1 t minus s2 t, that is the the different signal energy pi n per n zero by two is the pass spectral density of the noise with two sided track density. And this is my E D. Now what is my probability of beta? If I just combine this one, Q of E D by Is Q a square root of E D by two A zero? Now this one, this I am assuming that uh, we are defining a cross correlation. Okay, this is a measure of similarity between S one and S two, and that I am assuming that, and we know that rho equal to cos theta. Rho is between minus one to plus one. Okay. So from here we will basically discuss that how the probability of beta error is dependent on the this the beta energy. You will finally see that probability of beta error is dependent on beta beta energy, noise PSD, and this rho rho between that means S one and S2T. 
Okay. And we will explain those things. That means we will explain those things tomorrow. Tomorrow uh, I, will, I will take the class. So please, till means we will basically we will start tomorrow from here. Is optimizing the error performance, and we will see the vector space absolute. And we'll just break the signal into the orthogonal component that we have already studied in the some some last few classes. And I will we'll see that we see in some cases you choose that signal waveform in the some way that you see that you are getting PV equal to Q root PV by n zero. But in the previous case, you see that you are getting PV equal to 2EV by N0. So that means you have to choose your S1 and S2, that is signal waveform, when your see, S1 is a vector. Please remember, what do you mean by this S1 and S2? If you choose something like that, S1 is something like this type of waveform. Say this is your say S1 T, 0 and capital T. In this waveform, S2 T is basically, please remember, so this is your, this is your small T. So this is your S2. Now if you choose S1 T S2 T and go the same energy and all this is root EV, then you have some probability of each other. Now if you choose that uh, S1 T and S2 T they are orthogonal, to understand that orthogonal means integral of S1 T S2 T that will be zero. So that's why they have put an vector vector treatment, they have done S1 T and S2 T, then your probability of each other will be root EV by N0, which is that, what is the argument? Previously, the argument was 2 EV EV by N0, but here it is EV by N0. Now, you see that here the, so we, then, now, argument, the previous case argument is bigger, so that means PV is smaller. Now, when is PV is smaller for, for uh, this antipodal case, for, this, is, this is called antipodal or antiphase signal, okay? So, for antipodal case, your probability of beta is same. The probability of beta is much less than the orthogonal symbol set. This, if you choose S1 and S, S1 T and S2 T, so that you say S1 T you have chosen uh, something like this, S2 T you have chosen something like this, your capital T. So, if I just and say this is 1. Okay. So this is your T by 2, this is, this is orthogonal set time. Okay. So then we, we have we have presented it in this. So tomorrow we'll uh, study these things and please uh, uh, please permit me uh, to Please permit me to take the class in this because you have three days break, but as I have this lot of classes, so I like to take one class uh, almost every day. So let, let's see that what is what it is going on because I'm now busy in other medical aspect. So uh, so tomorrow let us let us assemble at means this time means five to six. So I will take one hour. Okay. And tomorrow I will announce that whether Sunday I can take. Most probably I will also I try. I will take Sunday also one day. So that Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So that means if I take five lectures, one one hour each day, I think I can I can manage a little bit of already lost syllabus. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.